were just, man, it seems like everything changed every day that we fished. And really, it was just about seizing opportunity when it presented itself. They started, you sort of had to come from behind. And, uh, you know, I had a great partner to uh, help me out with that. It's ACK, thank you for putting me on the kayak that I'd like. Hey guys, how y'all doing? It's uh, been a while, right? It's always been a while, it seems. I've been so busy with these tournaments. I get so many questions about where do I start, Chris? Where do I start and um, what do I do when I get on the water? What am I looking for? It's kind of a tough one to answer, but if you're in some grass flats, I'm gonna kind of break some things down for you guys that I think is extremely valuable, and that's drift fishing. So drift fishing is what it sounds like. You know, you set a drift, you go, let the wind kind of carry you. Hopefully you got one. Um, but I noticed that a lot of people don't really maximize their drifting. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys how I do it. Um, I've already filmed this episode, hence my haircut before and after. But um, I just figured I'd share this with you guys, man. I'm gonna try and break down something here for y'all. And I hope, I hope it, it, it helps. Um, I'm fishing in an area that I've never fished before. All I'm basically doing is looking at some Navtronics on my Hummingbird and I'm finding some, uh, some contour and some what would be vegetation and I'm working that on a drift but I'm not just drifting like I'm actually looking for things on this drift and then I'm repeating them over and over to find success. It was on this one right here. Uh, Sportsman Big Water 13-2 and uh, well you know what I, I, without further ado let's uh, get right in it. Hey guys, how y'all doing? It's uh, been a while, right? It's always been a while, it seems. I've been so busy with these tournaments, uh, just staying consistent with these fish and weight and um, just been cashing out. Uh, so today I decided to come out. I figured uh, this is kind of a good like overall scenario for a lot of us out here in Corpus, Laguna Madre. Uh, I'm pretty much like right in the middle of uh, Laguna, right? So to my right I've got King Ranch Shoreline and then to my left I have basically the National Seashore or the beginning of it. So um, it's always a big thing like when you're out in water like this it's like well where do you start? Do you, do you stick on the shorelines and typically yeah you can find fish there but I want to show you guys what I'm what I'm doing here and so I found a real big pocket here in the middle of Laguna. So Laguna can get real grassy to where you gotta go weedless. Uh, there's a lot of grass on this side and there's a lot of grass sucking out on that side. But these sandbars kind of help sort of disperse it a little bit. Uh, and there's grass, but like, there's not enough grass to where you need to go completely weedless. And what I've found is I've found a pattern by drifting, just staying consistent and picking up on some decent fish, like nothing special, just fish to take home and, and enjoy with the family. Let me show you guys here. I've got my hummingbird uh, going off side scan. Now you may ask yourself, why are you using this when uh, you know, you're only in two foot of water? Well, there's a reason for it because I'm kind of combing around and looking for different pieces of structure that I may want to bank off and, and toss at. Being a trout, you know, are typically ambushers. Um, now, I'm kind of cheating, right? sense that I already know I'm on fish. It's easy to film an episode when you know you're a fish. I've got just three 17 inch trout. A couple of them, one of them I think is like a little bit over. But um, I'm gonna see if I can get the rest of my limit with you guys. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this or not. But if you can, I'm gonna zoom out on my map. This is sort of like my drifts. Um, I'm gonna find another one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, you know, this is like a light blue right here. And I'm just gonna kind of comb this area until I hit something or until I see something. 
And when I find consistency, I'm gonna go ahead and just take these long, long drifts. And that's really about it. Now, here's the thing about drift fishing. Um, sometimes you can over drift as far as speed goes. You don't wanna be going too, too fast. And a lot of times your drift socks will help you sort of figure that out and, and slow yourself down give you a little bit more opportunity in strike zones when they present themselves. Uh, I'm not doing that today, even though I probably should, because I'm drifting at about one mile an hour. One of the most overlooked values to maximize your drifting is to properly recycle your undisturbed circuit. And this could be extremely difficult to achieve without the help of buoy markers or electronics. All right, so let me explain this because I already know you guys, man. All right, I already know you guys. Let's put it very simple, all right? This is your kayak. Point A to point B in this line sort of represents a drift. The angler that takes a drift, and let's say this is about 200 yards from point A to point B, gets on a couple fish and then comes pedaling back this way over his own drift. Is he gonna find out that he may get lucky, get a couple more in here, but he's basically burned out that entire drift. But the angler, it understands that he's got a good drift here, comes out of his way and forms his proper circuit and knows this right here is the hot spot. You wanna get a way to recycle and set yourself up for undisturbed success. The reason this is so important, man, is because it's just disturbance. You know, it's such a simple concept after you explain it, but you'd be very surprised how many people uh, just don't quite understand this. You know, there's guys that go from that point A to point B, and they just come right back and repeat, come right back and repeat, and they're just not catching fish or not catching fish to potential. And then you got these guys here that already know, they've already been through the rings of fire. Boom, 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 they're hitting, hitting, hitting the hot spot, and then they'll come back around, loop around, get away from that hot spot, and recycle. And you never know, man, you can actually be on a drift and catching fish pretty much all day during the hot uh, feeding times. So, that's what I mean. And that's the difference between maximizing your drift, catching all the fish you possibly can, or burning it out. Now, what I said before was I was looking for a new drift. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and mark this point let the wind take me further down the line and see if I can find consistency. What I'm noticing is the drift is actually changing towards the end of these grass flats which is deeper water. It tells me that as the hotter the water gets because we're entering noon, these trout are peeling off. That being said, I find something interesting. Drum mixed with trout, which forces me to a quick adjustment. With the trout still in my net, I'm not wasting any time for an opportunity to hook a black drum. It's not every day that you get a crack at a black drum with the lure, but hey, I've seen crazier things. Thanks for tuning in to Next Level Fishing TV. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them below in the comments. I will answer them. Till next time, my friends. Tie lines.